The jet stream is beginning to rapidly change across the country, bringing a whole new series of severe weather outbreaks, heavy rain, and even some snowfall. And by the end of the month, we could be dealing with a bizarre weather pattern. And we'll talk about all of that in this video. Taking it day by day here, starting with Tuesday, we got a dry line setting up right across the high plains here, a screaming surge of moisture coming out of the Gulf and dry southwesterly flow. Now you overlay that with this jet stream right here, Look at this trough right coming right into the western United States, delivering southwest flow right over the Rockies into the plains. That overlapped with those southeasterly flow. That's going to cause rotation in the atmosphere, moisture, and that's going to cause our thunderstorms. So you imagine your updrafts going up like that, hitting the jet stream, delivering the precipitation away. Those updrafts keep going because that precipitation is away from those updrafts. So if we look at the actual dry line here for Tuesday setup, it's hanging out right in the high plains. That's going to be the focus where you see those winds converge for severe thunderstorms, particularly across Kansas and Nebraska, where the events were the uh, ingredients will be the most favorable. So if you look at the actual precipitation here, you're going to see some uh, precipitation up here in the northwestern United States and parts of Canada. Don't have to worry about that. That's just light moisture up there. That's going to be mostly light rain. And then uh, some light rain and thunderstorms here in uh, parts of uh, Minnesota. The ingredients aren't quite there for severe weather. But as you get towards Kansas and southwest Nebraska and northeast Colorado, we could be dealing with some thunderstorms here. You see those bright splots. We're talking large hail, uh, potentially some damaging winds, and even an isolated tornado or two. I was looking at the soundings here, and it does support some tornadoes. So I'm busy tomorrow, but otherwise I would be chasing that area. And also some thunderstorms down here in southeast Texas. That's mostly going to be a heavy rain, thunderstorm, maybe even some isolated hail threat, but lots of heavy rain for southeast Texas. So if you look at the actual supercell composite here for Tuesday... Pretty high there in north central Kansas, southwest Nebraska, northeast Colorado. That will be the focus. This is essentially an index of all the ingredients converged together. And that's really elevated there. So some supercells possible. Temperatures are going to be pretty darn warm here on Tuesday. Look at that. Southwest parts of the United States and plains there in the 90s. And you see that warm front right there. And then to the east, a little bit cooler, but that heat dome, that ridge, really bringing in some warm weather. And it's very cool out here in the northwestern United States, which eventually, as that trough could it come in, potentially produce some snow for some folks in that area. And uh, you look at Tuesday here, it's Tuesday precipitation, big time rainfall for Texas, two to four inches in southeast Texas with those slow moving thunderstorms. And uh, where the rest of the area that sees thunderstorms, particularly Kansas, Nebraska, could see up to maybe an inch or so in those areas that get those thunderstorms. So let's take a look at the next setup here as we head towards uh, parts of Wednesday. So Wednesday, I think, is going to be a bit of a break day. As you see, the, there's not a whole lot of defined fronts. The moisture is kind of spread out across the area. So Wednesday is going to be a kind of a break day, a recharge day, like you're, you know, after a workout recharging for a couple of days, that's what the atmosphere has to do. So there's going to be moisture that continues to build all, all into the central and uh, parts of northern U.S. here. Look at that dry air there. So eventually this is going to come back together and converge towards the weekend, bringing more severe weather. But there could be some isolated storms that form across the, uh, the Rockies there. Again, probably isolated hail threat but nothing too major on uh, Wednesday here. If you look at the actual precipitation on Wednesday, you can see this is Wednesday afternoon and evening, a little bit of precipitation out here in the Eastern High Plain or the Eastern Plains. Again, probably not serious in terms of the severe weather, but uh, some thunderstorms possible. But a few spotty showers and, and maybe even some thunderstorms on the Eastern side of those High Plains and uh, Rockies there across the United States on Wednesday. But this low pressure system just kind of kind of running around there like a drunk, drunken stupor, just kind of bouncing around with that moisture coming out for several days. That will provide the focus for more severe weather as we get towards the weekend. So let's uh, take this towards Thursday. So this is Wednesday. Here comes that trough. And then as we head towards Thursday, Thursday afternoon and evening, this thing, like a bowling ball, comes right onto the United States, that flow, or the uh, lee side of the Rockies, into the central United States, that flow really diverging. That's going to create the focus for another severe weather event as we head towards 
Thursday and maybe even into Friday morning here across the central plains. So that jet stream, southwesterly flow, you overlay that with these thunderstorms that develop Thursday. So we'll fast forward this. And as you see, as you can see on the day Thursday, as that trough ejects, it's gonna dump a lot of cold air behind it. And look at that, some heavy snow for the Rockies. So particularly Western half of Colorado there, that low pressure system just sitting there charging up and it's gonna bring lots of moisture up this way wraps around that way, dives into the western part of Colorado and brings some snow. As we head towards uh, Thursday afternoon, this is when those thunderstorms will develop as the heat explodes across the plains. Thursday evening at 7 p.m., those thunderstorms blow up across parts of central eastern Kansas into eastern central and western Nebraska. That's where your thunderstorm threat is. Maybe even all the way down to Oklahoma and northern Texas, that little line right there potentially indicating a squall line and some showers and thunderstorms not as strong out in the Ohio Valley. But uh, you can see even some leftover snowfall as we head towards Thursday night. High pressure building in, low pressure here. That high pressure is what's responsible for that cold, cold air uh, on that back side. So if we look at the actual uh, surface analysis here for Thursday afternoon and evening, this looks pretty darn impressive. We're gonna have to keep a close eye on it. Here's your low pressure system here. And are we looking at tornadoes? Well, we got this really strong dry line. Look at those southwest winds surging right into it. And then we got this moisture smashing right into Kansas. That really sharp cutoff is what's going to potentially cause thunderstorms to light up like a Christmas tree right along this uh, dry line. And really heavy moisture. Look at that. 70 dews in parts of Oklahoma and southern Kansas. So it's going to be a swamp out there in some areas. And right where that moisture tongue, that little tip right there meets in that cold front and dry line, that could be also the focus for another tornado, tornadic and thunderstorm area right there in Southwest Nebraska, Northwest Kansas, all the way down to the dry line up into Texas. So this is a very good looking setup. It's a very finicky, small little setup. So we'll have to watch this closely. It could change from, uh, from then and now, but at the moment, it does look like something we'll have to watch for all hazards. You know, you have that southwest flow going across this dry line like this, which means, and the jet stream, which means when the thunderstorms develop, they're going to go right into this really heavy moisture right off that dry line. And you got southeast winds underneath it that causes rotation in the atmosphere. So as it looks right now, that towards the end of the week, least large hail, damaging winds, and potentially even some isolated tornadoes. So you're going to want to stay tuned to those uh, weather radios as we head towards uh, really the tomorrow into the end of the week across the high plains and central plains here. Uh, as you go towards uh, the north here, the moisture kind of drops off, so I wouldn't expect as much severe weather up there, maybe some just general thunderstorms. And look at that beautiful warm front right there. Can't get any better than that. 70 dews, 50 dews above that, 40 dews. Uh, so it's a, it's a really uh, strong warm front and setup we got going on here. So if you look at the actual uh, supercell composite as we head towards uh, Thursday afternoon and evening here, it really blows up across Oklahoma, Kansas, and again, that second area area I was talking about, southwest Nebraska along that moisture tongue. So those are the areas we're going to have to watch. The rest of the country don't have to worry about severe weather, really just the, the central plains here. And the SBC has got an, a severe weather risk out as well for uh, that day as well, I believe. So as we head towards Thursday, the temperatures really get hot across the country. And you can see that dry line that I'm talking about. Look at that dry line right there. Hot, dry uh, weather right behind that dry line. A little bit cooler out ahead of it and cooler along and north of that warm front as well. You can potentially see some cooler areas in those thunderstorms and that very cold pocket of high pressure behind it. And that's going to cause the focus for snow across potentially the Rockies here. So a little cold dome and the Rockies again, going to be a finicky setup. So amounts will change a little bit between now and then as it's a, a small little bowling ball type of trough. If you look at the actual uh, precipitation amounts here for Thursday, uh, as we head towards Thursday afternoon and evening, lots of precipitation across the high plains, Nebraska. So this is now through then, and you can see a lot of relief for droughts in these regions, one to three inches. Again, the high plain or the uh, eastern plains, again, one to three inches in some areas with those thunderstorms. And look at that, look at that snowfall right there. Uh, parts of the Rockies and Colorado, potentially six to eight inches, 12 inches in some areas. Again, 
upper elevations uh, with that and then potentially some more snowfall in the northwestern United States, just a few inches uh, with that. As we head towards Saturday here, potentially another setup across as it just moves to the east across Iowa, Kans uh, parts of uh, Minnesota, eastern South Dakota, Missouri, Oklahoma. Uh, this region right here, lots of moisture still left over here. But the issue is the uh, jet stream is going to weaken a little bit as we uh, uh, as it moves to the east on Friday. So this is Friday afternoon, evening. You can see it kind of loses its punch because a bizarre new weather pattern is going to be forming here. And I'll talk about that in a second. But some leftover flow, still lots of moisture. There still could be some severe weather across the eastern plains on uh, here as we go towards Friday. Again, the placement's going to change in my experience. Storm chasing, they often, uh, the models will often kind of backtrack to the west a little bit. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see, see these setups on Friday and Thursday move just a little bit farther west. Uh, we'll keep you know an eye on that. But this is Saturday morning, Friday night. You can see that thunderstorm activity there in eastern plains into the Ohio Valley. Leftover precipitation in the northern plains, just some light rain. Even some more thunderstorms that refire in the southwest parts of the plains on Friday. And again, Saturday, it just kind of sits there, that, that trough just kind of sits there and as it sits there the each day the thunderstorm threat will begin to diminish a little bit but still a couple thunderstorms rain just kind of sitting there and the reason it's sitting there is because the jet stream is a little bit weaker so that storm's not moving off the the uh, coast all that fast it's just kind of lollygagging around here so look at that rainfall right there in the southwestern united states southeastern southwestern united states some rainfall up there left over in uh parts of Minnesota. Now, as we head towards the end of the month here, or the mid parts of the month, this is going to be around the 14th, so I guess really Sunday, you can see this Rex blocks. This is called a Rex blocks, a Rex block, as we have a bit of a low pressure system here and a high pressure system here in the jet stream. So this is gonna circulate around like this, just like that, and sandwich the west coast of the United States. That's gonna really shut off the weather pattern and really keep some warm temperatures that return up into the northwestern United States as we head towards mid-month. That's gonna kind of shut off the severe weather uh, mid-month for the central and western United States. But the eastern United States, you can see this, this kind of diverts the flow down into the eastern United States. So we could see some rainfall that just kind of lingers around in the central and eastern United States, like I was saying. Uh, with that storm track. So that will be the pattern change to watch. We could see some decent rainfall in the southwestern United States. As we head towards uh, the rest of the month, it really just kind of shuts off the severe weather for a while here. So it looks like mid-month, it, it will calm down quite a bit across the plains, but we have to get through this week first. And then there are some signals uh, on the long ranges models that it will pick up towards the end of May into early June again across the United States. I'll probably be taking a chasecation around then to storm chase and provide a lot more updates for that pattern. But just wanted to give you guys this update. We'll look at the actual, we'll look at the precipitation through the end of the month here. You can see it light up, we'll say this week. Uh, and you can see Texas really getting the, the brunt of this precipitation and also out kind of along where that warm front sets up a lot. And those leftover thunderstorms move to the east and that 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 Rex blocks across the parts of the eastern and uh, Ohio Valley regions where you could see a couple of inches of rain. And then also the Rockies and northern U.S. seen a lot of relief as well with a, a few inches of rain. So lots of precipitation coming for the central United States into potentially the Ohio Valley here and the southern United States, especially over the next week. Stay tuned for updates. If there's a big time severe weather update, I'll be making another update as we get towards uh, uh, Thursday. Uh, but like I said, stay tuned. Hit those bell notifications if you like this video, and we'll see you soon.